to Jagruti Shah, preventive diabetologist from Bombay. You are watching me on a cfi.com. Doctor, can you please elaborate on the reasons involved in the onset of diabetes in today's times? We have a two types of diabetes. One is type 1 and another is type 2. Uh, for a general population, like uh, we have uh, sort of uh, designed uh, various patho uh, etiopathological mechanisms, uh, mechanisms like gen genetic and environment. We try to explain these two varieties on the basis of these two parameters. Genetic means you have a family history of diabetes either in your immediate parents or in your grandparents or someone in the family suffering from diabetes. Environmental factors are the factors whether they are uh, infections of various kinds or uh, lifestyle related issues. When we say infections of various types uh, like for example type 1 diabetes has been uh, uh, sort of correlated with autoimmunity that means you can have an infection in your early childhood because of various uh, viruses or bacteria mumps, measles, rubella, coxsackie, epstein barr viruses and this sort of infections uh, in your system makes you vulnerable to the various uh, autoimmunological process in your pancreas and so pancreas start malfunctioning and resulting into type 1 diabetes in early age sometimes as early as less than 5 years of age also. Type 2 diabetes is a variety which is more uh, because of genetic penetration and lifestyle related issues like for example from early childhood if you are having lot of fat based uh, food in consumption uh, where excessive uh, uh, especially uh, saturated fatty acids if you are taking in your diet uh, sedentary lifestyle that is lack of exercise from early childhood and if you are having a food which is more concentrated in like you know sort of a, uh, processed highly processed ready to serve food ready to prepare food all these type of varieties of food are having some sort of chemicals preservatives and uh, coloring agents when you are eating such kind of food from early childhood the chances are there that uh, there is an antioxidant deprivation from early childhood trace uh, matters or, or what we call as a deficiency of some sort of micronutrient or metals in from early childhood and that causes pancreatic malfunction and that results into type 1 type 2 diabetes and many times we have seen it in very early age group also other etiological factors uh, which have come into light in recent past are a nitrosoamine group of compounds that is if you eat a red meat or if you have a water which is contaminated with nitroso group of compounds and if you have exposure to such type of environmental agents like for example insecticides pesticides in higher proportion in the water or in the food which is being uh, served in a particular community even this type of agents uh, cause a type 2 diabetes. See now various countries abroad also, I mean out of India also and we have seen that uh, diabetes is uh, sort of you know uh, taking a uh, dimension of a major epidemic. When we say a major epidemic that means we are indirectly uh, po uh, postulating that environmental factors are more responsible than the genetic factor and when we postulate this hypothesis that means so many things are there which are in our control supposing if we try to correct those factors then possibility is there that at somewhere we can sort of control or reduce this uh, spread of diabetes which is occurring all over the world your guide to home sugar monitoring would be see home sugar monitoring is something which uh, has not been pop very popular because of the cost factor. Uh, home sugar mon monitoring I have noticed in my group of patients very good advantage because it gives you a lot of flexibility. See uh, every person when they uh, he's, he or she is diagnosed to have a diabetes as a diabetologist and especially a preventive diabetologist my aim is to keep that person with diabetes only a person with diabetes lifelong and never patient with diabetes. 
that means i want that person with diabetes not to suffer from disease of diabetes or the complication of diabetes home sugar monitoring helps quite a lot in sort of making a lifestyle adjustments for example like in diabetes the day patient is diagnosed to have diabetes we always give a list of no 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 that is you can't do this you can't eat this and like that so many times from day one we put too much of restriction when we put advise home sugar monitoring it gives a flexibility and it gives us the idea of patient's choices also and patient's liking and the test to which he wants himself to adapt so if a patient is uh, interested and in having concentration more on lifestyle modification then home sugar monitoring is very very important we give a different portion size we design menus as per patient's choices and find out with how much the patient should be eating that stuff we can introduce a very well what is glycemic load and glycemic index that is which are the food stuffs which can increase the sugars within immediately after 2 hours of intake of food and which are the food stuffs which if you take it regularly in a smaller portion size then blood sugars remain in a very in a measurable good range so that is we call it as a low glycemic index and low glycemic load uh, food stuffs lifestyle modification and adaptability and help in weight reduction is one way we use a home sugar monitoring and other most important aspect of home sugar monitoring is uh, three, during the pregnancy during infections during operative interventions during tuberculosis that means even patients of diabetes having other associated diseases like uh, cancer or some other complications where it requires like for example patients of diabetics suffering from major complications involving eye heart kidney or the legs they require very tight sugar monitoring that means we want the blood sugars to be controlled in the range of 80 to 120 these are the group of patients where the home sugar monitoring becomes very very important because we can change treatment as and when and uh, i mean patients uh, compliance is better when they don't have to go to the laboratory very frequently